Welcome to The Overlady Reads, the show where I, the Overlord, have a wife, the Overlady, and you read a book, and then we talk about the book. Yeah. I'm Ben, you're Lucy, and today we're finishing off Words of Radiance, I believe. Yeah, we're doing parts four and five of Words of Radiance. Yes, if you haven't seen our parts one, two, and three, um, well, one... One slash two. One slash two, and then three. How the videos we've done so far will be in the description down below. So let's jump right into it. Cool. Um, so part four. Yep. Starts with Kaladin brooding in jail. Obviously. He's not having a good time. He's getting very sort of claustrophobic. He's ne- He's not had a time where he's been s- like stuck in a room, unable to yeah. go anywhere, unable to do anything. Even when he was a slave, he was still moving about, being yeah. able to work, you know. Well, even as a slave, he was able to leave the slave wagon to like have a little run around before going back in. Mm. So he is not happy. He is not in a good place. He is talking a lot to Syl about this injustice and yeah. how much he doesn't trust the light eyes anymore how he really doesn't like them yes and it's uh it's, it's not great for him yes um one of these times when he's sitting and brooding he hears a big commotion going on down the corridor and he thinks maybe it's like bridge four Come coming to, break to him get out, him you know or something like that but no one appears at his cell he doesn't hear anything more and he's just him yeah. stuck by himself and he start he's talking to Syl about how much he hates Elicart at this point yes and he's starting to blame Elicart for a lot of the problems in his life yeah because obviously Elicart is the reason that um Ro- Rashon was Got in his to, village uh, yeah Elicart's the one that's just put him in jail even though he's done nothing wrong yeah and no one really cares so he's, uh, he's not too happy at the moment. And then he looks outside his cell and Wit has appeared. Yeah, good old Wit has come to visit him. And I think this might be my favourite Wit story is the, the one he tells here. Mm. So Wit is sitting outside playing his flute and they have a bit of a banter between them. Mm. And then Wit asks Kaladin to tell a story along with his playing. Yeah. And Kaladin is very resistant. And eventually he gives in and just does it in the hopes that it'll get rid of Wit. Yeah. And Kaladin starts to... He closes his eyes and he starts to describe the story of Fleet. Yes. So Fleet is trying to outrun a high storm to the coast. And Kaladin is telling this story. And... Like, whilst Wit is playing. Yeah. And then Kaladin gets to the point in the story where it's sort of like a, what's going to happen next? Yeah. And Kaladin decides that Fleet dies. Yes. Fleet collapses on the west, east, western coast of Shinovar and dies. Yeah. And Wit's like, well, it's not really a great ending, is it, mate? Yeah. And Kaladin's like, well, that's the ending in my head. Yeah. So Wit's like, well, why don't you try again? Yeah. So um, Fleet's dead. But he, and the storm stops and his soul rises and runs with the storm storm. like forever more kind of thing. Yeah. And um, that's sort of the story and it's really sweet. And that's sort of wit stories that he keeps coming out and like having these like lovely little moments yeah and then just disappearing off and then disappears he like gives an inspirational story and then leaves yeah Yeah. i love him so then kaladin's in his cell brooding some more yeah and then he gets an official visit yeah and so dalinar comes to his cell and he's like um look i know it's hard why don't you just pretend that you're guarding the cell (laughs) see whether that helps you out a little bit and kaladin is like yeah. <laughs> Kaladin is being mildly respectful, mm. but he is very much like, mm, like showing his um hatred. Not hatred, but his disobedient side towards yes. Dalinar at this point. And Dalinar's like, Boy, I saved your life. 
he mm. was going to execute you. You, you're in jail. But if yeah. he lets you out now, he's going to look weak. Yeah. So you just have to put up with this for a couple more weeks, so that it looks like when he pardons you, you've had enough time to reflect. Yeah. So Kaladin's like, well, I'm just another dark eyes in a jail cell. Like, yeah. it's not like Elokar's got a history of being good to them. Yeah. And then Dalinar's like, oh, you know about Rashon, do you? Yeah. And Kaladin's like, yes. And Dalinar reveals that he was part of that. Yeah. Because originally the king wasn't going to give Rashon... Wasn't going to punish him at all, was he? No. Yeah. But Dalinar managed to convince him to... Um, exile him but he wasn't able to like get him to lose his titles or anything yeah. but he was very much put in exile in a place where he couldn't do any damage yeah because obviously they don't know what he was doing in uh, Hearthstone Hearthstone and then Kaladin's angry and he says well you know that's a mercy that isn't ever given to a dark eyes yeah and Dalinar kind of like pulls him out and he's like, look, if you want things to change for the Dark Eyes people, yeah. you've got to be that change. You've got to step up to the plate. You've got to show everyone that you deserve the title I gave you and you have to live up to that title. Yeah. Because things aren't going to change for you and your people unless you prove that you are just as good as everyone yes. else. Yeah. And that's where Dalinar leaves it. And Dalinar leaves, and Kaladin is left to reflect and brood a bit more. Yes. So after that, it Kaladin turns to Syl, and he's like, you know what, Syl? That's it. Elokar needs to die. Yeah. I have... I'm done. Yeah. Yeah. I've worked this through. That is the best solution for this. And Syl's like, oh, oh, Kaladin, uh... you're getting really dark. <laughs> yeah. Please stop. Uh, and then... Kaladin gets released. Yep. And as he's walking down the corridor, the guard stops outside another cell. And he's like, right, he's out. Can you leave now? Yep. And then the door opens and... Adolin walks Adolin out. walks out. <laughs> Adolin completely disagreed with the judgment to send Kaladin to jail. Yep. And Adolin was like, no, if he's in jail, I'm in jail. Yeah. Such a lovely moment. It's a, this is this is the bro moment. This yeah. is where where Kaladin and Adelaide are like, yep, they're going to be friends. They are yeah. they're friends. Yeah. Well, they're not friends. They're not but friends. They'll now tolerate each yeah. other, and they've got some respect for each other. Yes. And it was a really lovely moment. <laughs> yeah, it's just really nice. Like it's they're they're, they're so argumentative up until that point, and that's the mm. point where Adelaide obviously now respects the hell out of Kaladin for what he's done in the, the yeah. arena. And then Adolin showed Kaladin that he respects him. And he's like, I disagreed so vehemently with what happened to you. I locked myself away. I went through the exact same thing you did. Yeah. Because it's like, I did the exact same thing you did. And I didn't get put in jail. So if you get put in jail, I'll get put in jail. Yeah. It's... And it was such a nice moment. Because up until that point, yeah, you don't really see Adolin as being like a hmm. nice character. He's yeah. just sort of an arrogant, light eyes. Yeah. And that's when you sort of realize that there's a bit more to him than that. Yeah. And it like, was he really saves sweet. the uh, yeah, he saves the the prostitute at the beginning of Way in Kings. Yeah. But like so he you see that that nice side of but him. Because he's sort of one of the lesser characters, you don't see those nice moments as yeah. often as you would with other characters. Yes. And it's just nice that he's got something to him. Yeah. Um so as they're walking down the corridor, Adolin's like, So, that Amaram thing, is that true? And Kaladin's like, yes. And I, Adolin's like, okay, I believe you. Yeah. And Kaladin's sort of like, well, really? Like, like under what conditions do you believe me? Yeah. Like, where's the butts? And he's like, no, I just, I just believe you. And Adolin's like, well, Amaram's a bit of a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't actually believe that he had won those himself. Yeah. So actually, this makes perfect sense. I completely believe you. And to be honest, he's a bit too squeaky clean there's yeah. something going on with him. So actually, I yeah, I'm with you on this. Yeah. And it's nice that Kaladin finally has someone that is 100% on his Just side. On his side, yeah. Like, no questions asked. Yeah. Um, and then they go into, like, this little room in the jail, and Bridgefall's there waiting to welcome Kaladin back. Yeah. 
and Aidlin is like, right, I've got a surprise for you. Here is your own shard blade and plates. Yeah. <laughs> and Kaladin is like, wow, thank you. Can I do whatever I want with these? And Aidlin's like, yes, they are yours. So he's like, cool, cool. Mish, they're yours. Yeah, he's like, yeah. <laughs> so Aidlin then like pulls him aside and he's like, dude, like you don't give this would give you like the same rank as me. Yeah. Like this is everything that, like, people will literally die to get yeah. their hands on these. Like, are you sure? Mm. And he's like, yeah. Like, I personally don't need them. You've seen me fight. I can fight shard bearers without them. Yeah. I don't need them. I'll give them to one of my men so that they can be a bit stronger. Mm. Nathan's like, you know what? I respect you. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. So then that happens. Moshe is now a shard bearer. Yep. Um. Bridge falls excited to go back and eat Rock's celebratory stew that has been stewing yeah. since Kaladin was put in jail. Oh, that is going to be a flavorful <laughs> stew, that will. <laughs> it's not one I want to eat. <laughs> um, and Kaladin's like, oh, give me a sec to talk to Moshe and I'll be with you in a sec. Mm. Then he goes up to Moshe and he's like, your plot to kill the king, I'm up for it. Yeah. Whatever it is, I am down for it. And then... Yeah, yeah, that's that one. So then the next section is yeah. Kaladin helping out as a bridgeman on a scouting expedition. Yes. Um, Adolin has finally managed to convince his dad to let Shalan go out on the plains to observe a... Uh, chasm Fiend. Chasm Fiend Pupating. chrysalis. Yeah. It's one that they got the gem heart out of a couple of days ago, so there's not going to be any fighting. Yeah. It's just going to be a nice little survey mission. Yeah. And whilst they're out there, they've got some scouts that are going to go and look for the Parshendi sort of like main area where they yeah. live. Yeah. So they can scout before they do their big assault. Yeah. So it's sort of got two purposes. So they're out there and Shalan is casually like sketching the bridges and the different mm. like wildlife that they encounter. Adeline is just lovingly staring at her. Yeah. And then there's a nice moment between um Kaladin and Adeline where Adeline asks Kaladin for some like romance advice. Yes. So he's like, look, <laughs> I really like this girl. Yeah. I don't want to mess it up like I always do. Do you have any advice? And Kaladin's like, mate, why you do asking I look me? like I know women? Yeah, I was like, why are you asking me? Like... It's such a sweet moment between them, though. Yeah. And they then have a discussion about if the assassin comes back, what they're going to do next time. Yeah. And how they're going to defeat him together. Yeah. Cute. <laughs> so then they get to the plateau that they were going to. Yeah. They put the bridge down. And they start to cross. Yes. And that's when Kaladin realises that the guy, the craftsman that's come with them, he mm. recognises from Sadius's war camp. Ooh. And so he quickly yells to Aelin to get to Dalinar to safety. Yeah. Just as the guy pulls, pulls the an emergency lever that like drops to the bottom of the bridge. Yeah. So Kaladin and Shalan fall. And like a bunch of other people A as bunch well. of some soldiers. But like, like Random namelesses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, luckily, Adolin has got Dalinar to safety. Yeah. And then as he's falling, Kaladin sucks in some stormlight to survive. Yes. Um, whilst they were doing this scouting mission, Sil is in, the mood with, in a mood with Kaladin. Yeah. And so she's ignoring him. And like every now and then, like he glances over and she's acting like a windscreen. Like she yeah. seems to have regressed. Yes. Because obviously he's realized. Breaking his bond. He's, he's... Well, he realized that he's made two conflicting promises. And in order to fulfill either of them. Yeah. It's going to kill her. Yeah. And so he's been in a bit of a panic as to how to fix this. And he realizes that he can't fix this situation. Yeah. And as he's falling, he sucks in a bit of stormlight. Yeah. And he hears Syl screaming. Yes. Well, I believe, doesn't she... She He's been struggling to draw in Stormlight, hasn't he? Yeah. But in order to survive the fall, he pulls it in and that... And so Syl kind of gives him that one little bit extra. Yeah. Which breaks, breaks the bond kind of thing. Or yeah. basically wipes out her mind as it is. Yeah. 
just to let him survive. So she sacrifices herself for him, basically. It's so sad. It's very sad. Um, so then Kaladin wakes up at the bottom of the chasm, surrounded by dead soldiers. Yeah. And he sort of like gets up and starts wandering about a bit. And then he encounters Shalan, who is perfectly fine. Yeah. And he's like, okay, I must have used Stormlight to save her. That's yeah. the only explanation I've got. Yeah. At the same time, Shalan's like, oh, I must, I have, must used- have used Patton to save the Bridgeman. Yeah. Why? But okay. Yeah. <laughs> and so they both sort of like feign that they have no idea how they survived. Yeah. And Kaladin's like, oh, I saw some windscreen flying around. They must have saved us both. And she's like, yeah, yeah. that's that's it. Done. Yeah. I love this little bit of dramatic irony where they both are trying to avoid telling the, the other person. They have good reasons not to tell the other person, but us as the audience are like, just talk, yeah. say stuff to each other. But like, they have legitimate reasons to not say, so you're like, oh, yeah. yeah. Like, well, this yes. whole book could have been like, this thick <laughs> if Kaladin would just admit that he, had, he was using Stormlight. It's the meme of what's Radiance. Words of radiance if people told each other that they were radiance. Yeah. <laughs> um, so they need to get back to the camp because there's going to be a high storm in like two days. Yeah. So they start going, making their way back. Shalan's doing sketches of the planes yeah. to map it out. Yeah. But she purposely doesn't do a good job because she doesn't want to show off how good her artistic skills are. Yeah. <laughs> not the not the best time for that. Yeah. Um and as they're walking, suddenly a chasm fiend appears. Yeah. So they're trying to outrun it and they can't. So yeah. Shalan has an amazing idea where they circle back on themselves back to where they fell. Yeah. So that they can distract the chasm fiend with the, the dead bodies, bodies yeah. and they can escape. So they start going back and they've yeah. now lost like half a day of walking it's getting dark yeah so they decide just to sleep yeah so they can resume in the morning and they continue walking the next day they've been arguing a lot because yeah. they don't like each other and they've really been arguing a lot during this sort of like walk yeah. It's kind of what drew the chasm fiend to them in the first was place, them, was yeah. them shouting at each other. And then they both realise that they're not going in the right direction. Yeah. And so Shalan sits and she does a proper map of the area. Yeah. Kaladin is like calling up to the patrols on the planes to see whether anyone's still out and can hear them. Yeah. But of course, because they're preparing for the high storm, they've all gone in, so yeah. they can't get attention. So they continue walking, yeah. they're arguing a bit, and Kaladin's like, why did you even come to the Shattered Plains? Yeah. And so that's when Shalan tells him that she's here to finish Yasna's research. She wants to find Irifulu. <laughs> <laughs> it's... Uh, it's uh... Irifu... Irifulu... It's not Cthulhu. I can't. It's Irithiru. Irithiru. Yeah, there you go. So she's here to find Irithiru. Yeah. <laughs> You're through. Like, <laughs> let's just pretend I said it properly. You did say it properly. Let's just pretend. Um, and Yasna was convinced that it was here in the Shattered Plains, which is why she came. Hmm. Um. She tells him about the Parshman being void bringers that are in like some sort of sleep mode. Yeah. And then she says, and you know, Adolin was just a nice added bonus. Yeah. Like- and he was like, so you're not going to try and like, you're not going to try and assassinate him. And she was like, no, I <laughs> really like the guy. Yeah. You know, I, I like to think he likes me too. Like there's no, like, I'm not going to harm him. Yeah. And Kaladin's like, okay, I trust you. And they start talking a bit more and Mm. they're bantering a bit. And he kind of realises that she's not too bad for a light eyes. Yeah. And they have a couple of moments where she's like, well, 
you know, it's not sunshine and rainbows on the other side, mate. Yeah. Like, we've all got our problems. You know, life isn't great for everyone. You've just got to keep trying to get through it. Yeah. He's like, okay, <laughs> may- maybe she's not awful. Yeah. So they keep going. And then uh, the chasm fiend appears again. Yeah. So they're running to try and get away from it. And she pulls, well, Kaladin pulls her into like this little like. Nook. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's a little like crack in one of the planes. Yeah. And the chasm fiend can't quite reach them, but they're stuck. Yeah. There's now only like a few hours until the high storm hits. Yes. Then like there might be a chance that one of them can make it back in time if the other sacrifices themselves to distract the chasm fiend. So Kaladin, knowing that Shalan has some important insight into the planes, along the trip, she realised that the planes are symmetrical. Yeah. And so now she can look, she now knows exactly where the Parshendi are, where the Oath Gate is, and it's important information that Dalinar's going to need. Yeah. So Kaladin decides, right, I'm going to go that way. I'm going to distract the Chasm Fiend. You just get your bag, get back to safety, save the world. Yeah. And so she's like, no, you don't have to sacrifice yourself for me. And he's like, I know I don't have to, but I'm going to. Yeah. This is happening. Just make the most of it. Yeah. And then she's like, well, if you're going to do that, take this. <laughs> and she gives him her shard blade. Yeah. And he is like, what? He's like, you've had this this whole time. This whole damn time. <laughs> Could have made life so much easier. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so then he takes a shard blade. Yeah. And he starts fighting the chasm fiend so that she can escape. And he's doing well for himself, considering yeah. that he's never handled a blade before. Yeah. He manages to get in a few good cuts, and it's going well for him until the chasm fiend bites his leg, and he accidentally, like, gets he gets thrown. Yeah. He drops the shard blade, and he's sort of, like, stuck. Yeah. And it's going to kill him. Hmm. And then Shalan appears. She's not run away. She's come to help him. Yeah. And so she starts screaming to get the Chasm Fiend's attention. And he's like, no! Yeah. Girl, what are you doing? Yeah. But he, it gives him a chance to grab his blade again. And then he runs at the Chasm Fiend. Yeah. And he manages to get inside its mouth and he stabs it. Yeah. Sort of like either through the jaw or like the back of the head. Yeah, it gets in the brain, you know. And he kills it. Yeah. But obviously he's in its mouth. Yeah. And so Sean's like, no! Um, so she runs over, she calls the blade to her because it's attached to her, so if she calls it back, it will go yeah. to her at any time. And she starts, like, hacking into its mouth to get Kaladin out. Yeah. And Kaladin's like, I'm fine, I'm alive. My leg's a bit messed up, but, like... I can't walk. Yeah. Um, we've now got a couple of hours till the storm hits. Yeah. And they realise that as they've got a shard blade, the best method of survival... Hmm is for one of them to climb on the back of the chasm fiend, like cut, cut some holes in the rock as like handholds, and yeah. then cut a big shelter just above like the water line. Yeah, because you can see the water line in the chasm. Yeah, because obviously it's been happening for years and there's a clear line where yeah. the storm stops. Kaladin can't do it because his legs are messed up, so yeah. Shalan has to do it. So she's doing that. Yeah. And then she manages to make she manages to cut a shelter and she's like, right, come up. And he's like, I'm injured. Like, you just like, live. My leg. I will just die. <laughs> and she's like, right, I will come out of here and yeah. I will force you up if you don't come up. Yeah. And he's like, okay, fine, I'll live. <laughs> yeah. So he goes and joins her and they're cuddled up in like the little cavern. Yeah. And the storm arrives just as he gets in. Yeah. And obviously these storms are terrifying. Yes. Like... They will kill you. Yeah. So she's terrified. She's never been out in a storm before. So Kaladin starts telling her stories to comfort her. Yeah. So he tells her about how when he was at Sadius's war camp, yeah. Sadius left him out in a high storm to be judged. So he's done this before and it's not like it will be fine. Yeah. And then he tells her the stories of like how he became a slave. He tells her stories of, like, his time in the war camps. Yeah. 
his time as a bridgeman, how he saved Dalinar, how he then started working for Dalinar. And, like, he's telling all these lovely stories. Yeah. And so she then opens up and tells him about her childhood. Yeah. How her, how she killed her dad. Yeah. How her mum died. How it wasn't great for her growing up and how she kept her family together and how much she loved her brothers. Yeah. And she talks about Helleram. Yeah. And how she loved him and how he died. Yeah. Fighting in a certain war. Yeah. <laughs> and that's when Kaladin realises that the shard bearer he killed yeah. was Shalan's brother. Yeah. And uh, it's like, oh, that's a that's a little a little nugget of drama. Yeah. That's that's been planted and that'll uh you Well know. I I don't understand how it hasn't come out yet. Because yeah. Shalan knows that Amaram has her brother's yes. shard blades and plates. Yes. But the only people that Kaladin's told the story to Well, no, is... no, no, because Kaladin made that big boon, like, declaration that Amaram stole his plates and blade. Yeah. And Shalan was there for Shalan that. was there. But also Shalan isn't the smartest person in the world. She's pretty clever, mate. She's pretty clever, but she's not like, you know, sometimes she just doesn't put two and two together. Or she does what is an even more Shalan thing to do. She might have realised, but then just kind of... Pushed it down. That, that's probably yeah. what happened, but like it's quite known at this point. Yeah. And I'm I'm waiting for the fallout of this because this is gonna be something juicy that happens down the yeah. line. Um and as Shalan's telling him mm. stories of her and Yasna and the soul casters and her being Yasna's apprentice. Yeah, getting poisoned and the Well it goes white the Kaladin. Like, he stops hearing her, he stops seeing her. So then the Stormfather appears and he tells Kaladin that he's a child of honour. Yes. Um, He tells him that he's killed Syl and that he's no longer going to ride the winds. Like, this is them done. Yes. They will not see each other again. Yeah. And Shalan also saw him but it's not revealed what he said to Shalan, because I'm oh, okay. assuming they had two different interactions. Yes, they would have had two different interactions. And then... I don't remember Shalan having a conversation with the Stormfather. Well, she also saw him. Yeah. So I can only imagine he spoke to her too. She might have just seen him, but... Yeah. yeah. Um. So then the storm lets up, and they fall asleep, cuddled up together in an alcove. I hope you, I hope you've enjoyed the sequence because this sequence has been has been sustaining Shallad and Shippers oh. for like for like six, seven years at this point. Look, I get it, <laughs> I get it. They're both broken, yeah. damaged people, yeah, and they can be together, and it'd yeah. be lovely. I always really liked. Um, Kaladin's moment where he's like, he looks at her and he like sees the pain and like mm. in her eyes, and he's like. But she keeps she's smiling. smiling. And he's like, how does she do it? And he's like... So uh, lovely. Yeah, it's a good moment. <laughs> it is. Um, and then we get some Shalan flashbacks. Oh, yes. Um, so Shalan, Shalan's first one is she's started to become the perfect daughter. Yeah. She stopped really talking. She doesn't, like, disagree with her dad at all. Yeah. She's just sort of there. Yeah. And then when she's alone with her brother, she's herself again. But around the house, she's just sort of like a ghost of herself. Yeah. And they found some new marble deposits on their land, so they've got money coming in. Yeah. Like, she thought that that would make her dad, like, happier and less angry, but it's not made any difference. He's yeah. just as he was before. Him and Balot start arguing about who Balot should marry. Yeah. Because he wants to marry... Uh, Alita. Alita. Yes. Because obviously they really like each other. They've been courting for a few years, yeah. you know. But his dad thinks that she's beneath him now that they've got money. Yeah. And his dad wants him to marry the high prince's daughter. Yeah. Who's in her 50s. Yeah. So Balot obviously doesn't want to go through with that. He's like, I'd rather not, Dad, you know. Like, I'm happy, you just let me be happy. Yeah. So a big argument breaks out over the dining table. Yeah. Um, Balot, uh, his dad's really angry with him. 
Yeah. And he decides to send one of his new guards out to go and kill all of the lot's axe hound puppies. Oh no. Yeah. Oh, not not a moment that I ever want to see. <laughs> no. Um and then in his anger Belot reveals that he's been talking to Helleran behind his yeah. dad's back and his dad gets so angry that that's sort of like end of conversation. Yeah. Like screaming match done. Yeah. And um, Belot goes out to the kennels and finds all of his slaughtered axe hound puppies. Yeah. And Shalon goes out to him and he tells her that he's going to leave with Alita. He they're going to run away, yeah. They're running away. He doesn't want anything more to do with their father. Hmm. And Shalon's very understanding. She goes back to the house and as she's passing her dad's rooms, she hears him talking to one of his assassins. Yeah. And he takes out a hit on Helleran. Yep. Because he's fed up of being Helleran. associated with him. Yeah. Um, and Shalon's about to go in and protest when her stepmom, um, meh. Even I couldn't tell you what the stepmom's name is. Right. I've got it written down. Give Have you two now? Two seconds. Melise. Oh, okay. Melise. Um, Melise. Um, she steps up and she's like, I can't believe that you would have a hit taken out on your son. Yeah. Like, I married you even though there were rumours of what happens to your wives. Yeah. Because I wanted to trust they weren't true. And I've just seen you take a hit out of one of your sons. And like... now I can't, you know. Um, so they're arguing. It's very loud. Yes. Um, the next flashback is two hours later. Mm. And Shalan leaves her room and there's guards in the corridor. And she's like, okay. What's, what's happened? She's She assumes that they're there to stop Melise from leaving. Yeah. But at this point, she's like, she might not even be alive because that was very angry. Yeah. She goes past her dad's room and Melise is in there crying. And she's like, okay, she's alive at least. I'm going to go and find dad. Yeah. So she goes to look for their dad. Um, she goes in the kitchen. She makes him his favorite drink. Yeah. Just blue wine with cinnamon. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna leave now. I'm just done. <laughs> <laughs> well, I assume it's like mold wine. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> and plus cinnamon helps to mask the poison taste. Obviously, yes. So yes, 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 it's yes. important foreshadow. Yes. So she gives him his favorite drink, and yep. he's like, "I don't get it." No matter what I do, nobody respects me. I try to be nice to you people and I get nothing. Yeah. I try to assert my authority and it gets me nowhere. Like, why Why am I even still with you people? Yeah. Like, can't even respect me in my own home. And Shalane's like, I'll talk to them, Dad. I'll, I'll help them to yeah. be understanding. So she goes to speak with the lot. Who and she's like, right, talk to Helleram, get a safe escape plan yeah. sorted, but please take Melise with you yeah. because she needs to get away from this man before he kills her. Yeah. And so Belot agrees. And then Shalon goes to speak to Melise, who has a broken wrist and like a split lip. Yeah, she's, so she's Shalon, rather beaten. Yeah. Yeah. Shalon's fixing her up. And Shalane tells her the plan for her to escape with Balot. And she's like, well, with me and Balot gone, who's he going to be angry with? Who's he going to beat? Who's he yeah. going to be mad at? Is he finally going to be mad at you, the one who deserves it? And Shalane's like, maybe. Yeah. Oh, that's such a hard moment. Yes, it's very rough. Because Shalane obviously knows that She's she the reason. deserves it. Yeah. But he won't ever hurt her because he's scared. Yeah. And it's really like... <sighs> it's fair. It's... It's such a hard moment. Yeah. Um, the next flashback is Shalan and Yashu? Jushu. Yushu. Jushu. Jushu. For, for <laughs> once, hard. it's a hard J. For once. It's like the, it's like the first and only hard J. But earlier on you told me it wasn't. No, it's Yasna and Yezareza and Yalkaved, but it's Jushu. 
I know, I know. <sighs> so Jushu. Yeah. Um, her and Jushu are helping Balot prepare to leave because mm. it's almost time for him to leave. Um, when Wickham comes in and he's like, yo, Alita's in the dining hall with Dad. And they're like, no, yeah. she's not supposed to be here. That's not the plan. So yeah. they all run down to the dining hall um, where Dad reveals that he knows about their escape plan. He's not going to let it happen. Yeah. Alita's beneath him and he should just kill her, get yeah. it over and done with. So then maybe his son will finally marry someone better. Yeah. So Balot and his dad start fighting. Balot has a sword. His dad has a poker from the fireplace. Yeah. Shalong goes to get in the kitchen, but the door's blocked. And upon further pushing, she realizes it's a body. Yeah. It's the body of her stepmom. Her yep. dad has killed her after finding out she was planning to leave. Escape, yep. So Shalon goes to make him his favourite drink. Yes. To try and calm him down. And she adds some special powder that she got earlier on from, from, Wickham. Wilcom- from Wickham. So as they're fighting, Belot stabs his dad, like, through the side. Yeah. And, like, it's a slight graze, but it hits something metal. Yeah. And he's a bit confused by it. Um, Shalon gives her dad a drink. They're screaming at each other. Yeah. They're talking about how they're going to kill each other. Like, it's a really, like, horrific... Yeah. Scary moment. It's, yeah. It's horrible. And then suddenly her dad falls back. Yeah. And they think he's dead. And Shalon reveals that she gave him the Black Bane poison... Because he killed the stepmom. Yeah. And he was going to kill them all. Yeah. And then it reveals that he's not dead. No, he's, he's like... just paralysed. And Shalan, being a <laughs> sound mind... <laughs> is Do you want to like, put it that way? <laughs> well, got to finish the job, guys. Yeah. Someone's got to do it. So she takes off her necklace... She holds it over his throat and she chokes him with it. Mm -hmm. And while she's doing so, she sings the lullaby that he sang to her all those years ago. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, that's so... Her flashbacks are just... They're they're so emotionally draining. Just like, like, this is a broken family and just listening to like... Nothing any of them do makes the situation better. Nothing any of them do can make the situation better. And it's just like... Yeah. Um, so before I go on to the epilogues for this... Interludes. Interludes yeah. for this part. Um, I'm just going to go back to a couple of scenes that happened sort of like whilst Kaladin was in prison. Okay. Yeah. Because I wanted to do Kaladin in that big yeah. chunky block. Yeah. His storyline starts to overlap with Shalan. Yeah. So because of that, like, it was hard to work out where to fit a couple of the other chapters in. Yes. I was supposed to talk them, talk about them before Kaladin. You're fine. I got distracted because it's Kaladin. It's Kaladin, yeah. Um, so whilst Kaladin is in jail, yeah. Shalan is practicing her illusions with Patton. Yeah. Um, she works out that she can infuse Patton with Stormlight and he can move around as one of her illusions. Yeah. She starts to get quite good at them. Um, so she's waiting for the ghost bloods to give her her next set of instructions. And rather than doing that, she goes out early in the morning and she hides in a building above, like overlooking the tree where the yeah. instructions are hidden. Yeah. And she's hidden herself in an illusion. And she sends Padden out to look to see if any of the ghost bloods are hanging about. Yeah. And he finds the lady in the mask yes. a couple of rooms below. So she sends Patton to the tree as an illusion of veil yeah. to retrieve the instructions. And whilst he's doing that, she sneaks down to the floor where the lady in the mask is and she surprises her. Yes. And she's like, well, why are you spying on me? And the lady in the mask is like, well... We wanted to see you in action, so I'm here to join you on your next mission. Interesting. So they get in a palanquin, 
Um, the lady in the mask tells her her name is Iatil. 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 Or Iatil. Yeah. Iatil. Um, and they go to a sort of like mental hospital in Dalinar's yes. war camp. Yes, yes, yes. And the first task is for Shalan to get them in. So Shalan like sticks her head out the carriage. Yeah. Drops the veil illusion. Is like I am Shalan. Let me in. Yeah. So they get past all of the guards and the waiting without any issues. And then Patton distracts Ilatil so that she can get back in and yeah. put the illusion back on. And Ilatil's like, wow, that, you must have prepaid them. That was quite impressive. Yeah. And then they get in and then they get in and they need a way to get into like the rooms. Yeah. So Shalan grabs an Arden and she's like, you need to help my sister. She can't take her mask off. And he's like, that's not really our job. And she's like, no, <laughs> you don't get it. Yeah, and, she really won't take her mask off. <laughs> and luckily, Illatil yeah. starts sort of like acting out, like freshing about, yeah. and like screaming and stuff. So the Ardents are quite happy to then take them in. Yeah. And whilst that distraction's happening, Shalan slips off. She puts an Ardent illusion on. Yeah. And she goes looking for their target. And their target is a guy that's been taken in. And they just want to know what he's saying to himself. Yeah. So she manages to get into his room using Patton to unlock, unlock the it. Door. Yeah. And she sits by his bed whilst he's mumbling the same thing over and over. So she makes a record of it. Yeah. And when she realizes it, he's just repeating the same thing, she leaves. Well, she goes to leave. Yeah. She draws in some stormlight. And he appears next to her and he like grabs her yeah he starts talking to her about the desolations yeah and she's like uh okay what? <laughs> and then he just sort of lets go and wanders back to his bed and just starts going back to his loop yeah and she's like that was terrifying i won't use stormlight in here again yeah but then as she's about to leave amaram is Turns coming up. in yeah so she quickly like has to use stormlight so she makes herself darkness so that she yeah. can hide in a corner amaram comes in and borin borodin borodin tells <laughs> amaram about how the guy in the bed was talking about a cache of um shard blades yeah and upon realizing that he's not gonna, um, he's not gonna hear it from the guy. Yeah. Amaram asks, Bo Borodin. Yeah, Borodin. To take him to the hidden shard blades, and yeah. they exit. And then Shalan goes back to where she's left Ilatil. She pretends that she's saying goodbye to her. She like whispers, like, "I've got the information. I'm gonna pass it to Moretz by Stormread yeah. later." Get yourself out. Yeah. You're good. Deal, you deal with your problems. Yeah. I'm sure you can do it. Which she can, so yeah. it's all good. Now, um, before we move on. Yeah. Eartil. Yeah. Any theories about Eartil? Um, well, she wears a mask. Yeah. And the only other people in the Cosmere that we've come across that wear masks. Yes. Are the people from the Southern Hemisphere. Yes. In Scadriel. Yes. So I can only assume that that's where she's from and that she's yeah. a world hopper. Okay. And we already know that Moritz... Moraes. Moraes is surrounded by world hopper stuff. So you can it's safe to assume she's a, he's, she's a world hopper as well. Yeah. Like, that's what I'm going with. Yeah. Because I don't have any other explanation as to why she wears a mask and yep. why she talks about how people should wear them because they hide their emotions. Yes. It's a... Um, it's a very so southern hemisphere talk so we know she has i believe the way it works is she's we know she's got descendants from scadriel mm. or what's the what's the opposite of descent she's ascent no she's descended yeah yes we know that she's descended from people who are from scadriel but she's not actually from scadriel herself and so this raises many... I wasn't going to get that from the text. Yeah, I know. You're not going to get this from the text, but she she raises a lot of questions. And I've asked Brandon myself about whether she's a misting or a misborn or a fairing or a faruka mist. Because she's she's very... She like perches on chairs yeah. sort of sitting on them. She does that whole misborn thing of, you know, not... I hope there's a misborn. Yeah. yeah and so she's... Something's going on with her. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. 
she's a she's an interesting character. Yeah, she seems like it. Yeah. Um. So that's obviously where we really leave Shalan until after Khaled until after, gets out of yeah. jail, but we already covered yeah, her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So the only other person to talk about is Dalinar. Yeah. Um. So he is prepping for war. So he goes to a part like the king's party with Navani, and he gets there, and people are sort of gossiping behind his back and yes. pointing and laughing a bit more than normal. And he's like, okay, kind of expected. And he goes to talk to one of the high princes and he's yeah. like, I'm surprised you're able to show your face. Yeah. He's like, oh, why? What's going on? And he's like, have you not read the papers? Yeah. And someone has got hold of the transcripts of the his Nivani's. and Navani's yeah. um, storm Vision. Visions. Yeah, she's been cataloging his visions. Yeah. yeah, someone's got hold of those, but they've adjusted the writing so it looks like Navani's like sassing him. Yeah. And like Navani doesn't really believe what's being said. She's sort of just going along with it to make him feel better about himself. Yeah. And it heavily implies that he's just crazy. He's just a crazy guy. Yeah. And Dalinar's like, oh, okay, cool. And, like, Sadius is there, like, waiting for him to get angry. So yeah. he's got, like, further ammunition. Instead, Dalinar gets up on the table. Yeah. And he addresses this. And he's like, no, I 100% am having these visions. This yeah. is how I know they're true. Someone has doctored the writing so that Navani comes so, across in a different light than yeah. she should. Um. I'm very much going to be fulfilling the vengeance pact. Yeah. And anybody that still believes in Gavlar's mission and oh, what do you call it? Um, anyone who still wants to seek vengeance for him. Yeah. Meet me on the Shattered Plains at this time, this date, and we are marching. Yeah. And then he doesn't leave. He starts individually talking to every single person yeah. kind of doing damage control yeah yeah and it's, then it's it's Dalinar finally kind of learning politics politics but he's doing it in a very Dalinar way yeah yeah um and then it's like hours later he wanted to go home hours before but obviously yeah. he's had to do all of this yeah and him and Whit are left at the end together um Oh, yes. Yeah. And Wit, they're having a very honest talk. And Wit talks about how um, he's a tyrant, but he's a good tyrant. <laughs> You're one of the good ones, though. Yeah, like, yeah. yes, he is a tyrant, but everything he does is for the good of people. Yeah. And they're having a really nice talk. And then Wit's like, by the way, I'm off. I've got somewhere to be. Yeah. So then Wit leaves just before it gets good again. Yeah. Is is this the conversation where Wit says, I have my own goals here mm. and I would see this planet burn to accomplish them? <laughs> and then it's at that moment you're kind of like, Oh, Wit. I don't think Wit's a good guy. Maybe. <laughs> he's never been a good guy. He's never been a good guy, but like his, his, his goals and his morals have always been very questionable. Yeah. I mean, obviously you've seen him, you know, when he meets Kelsia, like... You've seen him. What he does when he finally realizes he can beat the crap out of someone is he immediately yeah, takes that chance. In his defense, he's never been able to. He's before. not been able to. Well, he's not been able to in a very, very, very yeah. long time. Um, but like, this is the time where it kind of makes you go, "Oh, maybe Wit isn't here benevolently. Maybe <laughs> Wit is a." There's a reason. There's a reason he's here. Yeah. Um. And the next Dalinar chapter. Yeah. Um, Dalinar is out with Amaram, who is desperately trying to get him to befriend Sadius again so that they can do all of this together. Yeah. And Dalinar's like, look, he's invited to join us. I just don't think he's going to. Yeah. It is what it is. Yeah. And a messenger runs up to them and he's like, hi, Lord. Hi, Lord. Yeah. Storm, Stormlight's back. Or like Storm, 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 Storm Blast is back. back, yes. And so, um, Dalinar runs to the medic area where yeah. Kaladin is, and Kaladin like quite weakly like gets up and like salutes him, and he's like, "No, 
Stay down. Just sit back down, man. What's wrong with Don't you? Don't salute me when you're this injured. Um, and Kaladin says that, you know, some spree must have saved him and Shallan. Yeah. Um, they fought a chasm fiend. Here's the gem heart. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and yeah. it's just really cool. And then Shallan's like, don't listen to him. Yeah. Yeah, we survived somehow. We're not quite sure. Yeah. But the chasm fiend was already dead. We did not kill it. Because <laughs> obviously they've got to try and like downplay, downplay what's happened. Yeah. Um, and Navani runs in and she starts to become really protective of Shalan. Yeah, mothering her. and It's yeah. really lovely. And um, Dalinar notices that Amaram is um, missing. He's, he's suddenly not with him anymore. Hmm. Can't imagine why. Dalinar realises that Amaram seems to be avoiding Kaladin. Yeah. Don't know why. And then Dalinar asks Kaladin if he's what he's been looking for. Yeah. And Kaladin says, not anymore. Like, yeah, I, I, he was, but... Not anymore, because he's obviously lost his Stormlight ability at this point. Yeah. So then it's later on, and Shallan is now in Navani's palace being yeah. cared for by her. And she sends Patton off to listen in to Navani and Dalinar's conversation. Navani doesn't want Shallan to be taken out to the plains. Yeah. Dalinar understands that they need her there because she's got all this important information. Yeah. And not just that, but she can find the Oath Gate, so they need to take her. Yeah. Um... And Adolin runs in and he's like, I wanted to come sooner, <laughs> but I had to finish my work. And then they told me that you were here and I've raced back yeah. and they start kissing and it's really sweet. <laughs> and then Dalinar and Navani come in. So they have to separate, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and before they can say anything, Shallan is like, I'm going out to the Shadow Plains, not hearing anything about it. Yeah. This is why I have to go. You need me there. Don't argue with me because I'm going. I'm going, yeah. So they all accept that, yeah, she's she's going to come with us. That's fine. Yeah. And she's like, right, my one condition is that we are not taking any Parshman. Yes. And they agree, luckily. Even they're like, that's madness, but if you say so, if Yasna says so, rather. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's part four. Yeah. Excellent. How did you feel about part four? It was so good. <laughs> yeah. I absolutely loved the whole, like, Shallan and Kaladin. I will admit, even though I'm definitely more of a Shadlin kind of guy, there is 100% chemistry there. I yeah. do, and I like it. If in an, in another world, I definitely could see that happening. Yeah. Yes. Like, it was definitely, it was, a, it was a great moment. They had some really nice... Time together. Time together. And like, yeah. And it was just really nice. It was. It was. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. So part five. Part five. Wait, interludes. Oh. <laughs> did, you, did you write anything about interludes? Yes, I have. I completely forgot because I went back. <laughs> right. So interludes. Interludes. The first interlude is Pi. Pay? P-A-I. Pi. Pi. Cool. cool. <laughs> Um, she's a new female Arden. Yes, yes. Working for the Queen. Yes. Um, the Queen of Kolinar. Yes. So I believe that that is Elikar's wife. Yep. And she's obviously holding the fort whilst he's out on the plains. Yeah. Um, she treats her Ardents to a life of luxury. Yeah. Because she believes that by doing so, it will put her in a good stead when she like... When she dies. When she dies. You know. yeah. um, so because of that, they live these overly luxurious lifestyles. And yeah. Pi is very much... Against this. Yeah. Um, everyone's like, she's, you know, trying to say stuff and everyone's like, Pi, like... Yeah. Just count your blessings, okay? This is a good gig. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the Ardent showing her around Lahain? Mm-hmm. Lahain? Mm-hmm. Lahain. Yeah. Um, he thinks that the best way to kind of help her out yeah. is by giving her the job of um, sorting the leftover food out for the poor. Yeah. So he takes her to where it's kept. And mm-hmm. there's like six months of rotten food. 
Yeah. Because the last Arden died and no one wanted the job. Yeah. And so she's staring at like all this wasted food, knowing how many people are out there starving and suffering. Yeah. And she is not too impressed. Mm -hmm. And he gives her some space and he tells her that, you know, they'll talk more in the morning. In the morning, he wakes up. Mm -hmm. He goes to the throne room. Yeah. Where she has spent the night writing gigantic glyphs in the throne room. Of like the ten. The ten foolish attributes. Yes. And alongside each of the ten foolish attributes... She's written in detailed paragraphs how the queen has exemplified them. Yes. And it's, and I believe the last line of the epigraph is, the next day the riots began. Well, first... Okay. She's executed for it. Oh, yes. First she's executed. And then the riots began. And then the riots began. So, Alephi... Uh, Kolinar. No, Alephi. Alephia. Alethia, the name of the people, because the city, oh, okay. the country is called Alethka, and the okay. city is called Kolonar. Well, the people riot. The Alethi people in Kolonar riot. Yes. So, <laughs> oh boy, I'm very interested to find out what's happening there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, the next one is Ashonai. Yeah. She's trying to stop the voice inside from screaming constantly. Yeah. And she is failing. Yeah. <laughs> She's talking to Venli. 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 Yep. About the upcoming attack. Venli wants to just attack them soon, get it over and done with. Ashonai wants them to wait until the humans are literally face to face. Yeah. So that, that way they can't just escape quickly. They can't hide from the storm. They'll be wiped out. Yeah. And that's kind of... That's it. That's yeah. it. That's, yeah. It's just them arguing, arguing for yeah. their points. And then the next one is Taravengi. Oh, good old Taravengi and... Uh, Taravangian. Interlude. Um, These are always good. What happens in Taravangians? So he wakes up on a ship. Yeah. And he does his daily intelligence test. Yeah. Um, he has asked the Night Watcher for the capacity to save humanity. Yeah. Which she gave him once, and in yes. that day, yeah, he wrote out this gigantic diagram for how the world will go, end. like how to save the world. Yeah, yeah. And his sort of punishment seems to be that on every every day he wakes up. Yeah. And his intelligence is different. Yes. So some days he's too intelligent to function properly. Yeah. Some days he's too unintelligent to function properly. Yeah. <laughs> and most days he's in a middle period. Yeah. And he can't predict it. Yeah. Like he's never had another day where he's written out like... Something like the diagram. Something like the diagram. Like he's he's had... I, I thought it was cool that there's... He's had some days where when he wrote the diagram there was like chunks that no one understood what mm. it meant but there were some days where he got intelligent enough where he could translate yeah the big day but like he could never ever reach that height again yeah like, yeah um so he's quite annoyed that he's not being back at that state but obviously he's never going to get back yeah. to that place so he gets out of his ship in Yakabed. then then Vedanar Vedanar yeah and he's sent ahead lots of medics to help the people, to show that he's a good leader who's yes. there to help them and offering aid without anything in return. Yeah. What a good guy he what is. What a good guy. Little do they know that he's the one that caused their civil war. Yep, yep, yep. And he is behind <laughs> all of the issues that they've had recently. Yep. Um, and he makes his way into, well... He's making his way to the palace. Yeah. When Seth confronts him. Yes. And Seth is like, Dalinar has a surge binder. Yeah. And Tyrovangi's like, oh, I should have known that Yasna wasn't dead. Yeah. You know, of course she faked her own death. Uh. And Seth's like, no, it was a guy. Yeah. And um, Tyrovangi manages to convince him that 
No, it's probably just someone that's stolen an honor blade like you. Yeah. Don't worry about it. I've asked you to kill Dalinar. Now go back and do it. Yeah. And so he, so Seth goes back and Tara Vanji's like, oh my goodness, thank you. Thank you for that. Because obviously if Seth had realised that he was truthful this whole time, he would have just killed Taravanji on the spot. spot. So he goes back to kill Dalinar. Yes. And Taravanji... (laughs) Good old Taravanji. (laughs) um, Sends an... He sends for word for one of his assassins to take out Kaladin. Yeah. To obviously stop Seth from meeting him again. Yeah. Because if he meets him again, he'll realise the truth. And he can't have that happening. So then he goes to the king. Yeah. Um, the king is dying. Yeah. And he's with his bastard son, Reddin. Reddin. Good old Reddin. Love Reddin. <laughs> and he's like, well, I know why you're here. Yeah. You know, you've done all of this. And he's and Taravanji's like, well, you've got to give your kingdom to someone. <laughs> give it to me and I'll help your people. And yeah. I'll make it okay. So then he turns to Reddin and he's like, stab me through the heart. Yeah. And Reddin's like, no, dad, I don't want to do that. <laughs> and he's like, do it. Yeah. So he does. And then Reddin leaves because obviously he doesn't want to be there. Yeah. And the kingdom is now Taravanji's. Yeah. And he believes that in becoming the king, it will help him to unify the world as Gavilar was trying was try well was told to do yeah so that's where we leave him yeah so Taravan Jr. becomes the king of Yakovet yeah yeah that's terrifying and then oh and then don't forget at the end Reddin gets on a horse and rides off into the darkness and it's like oh okay bye Reddin hope to see you again soon don't we all don't we all part five yes now there is an event that happens okay I can't remember if it's the beginning of part five or the end, or of, part the end of part four. Yeah. So I'm just going to throw it in there at this point. Okay. And that is um, Amaram, when he was talking with Dalinar a couple of chapters ago, Yeah. says that for defamation, he would like an apology from Kaladin. Yes. Because he's defamed him in front of everyone and yeah. he wants everyone to know that Kaladin is wrong. And Dalinar's like, yeah, I'll see what I can do. So then, just before they set out on their pl- on the plains, yeah, he's like, "Amaram, come with me, and I'll get you that apology you want." Yes. So they approach um, Kaladin, who's saying goodbye to Bridge Four, and Dalinar's like, "Okay, an apology is due." Is due, yeah. And Kaladin's about to say something, and Dalinar stops him, and he's like, "No, Kaladin, not from you." He goes, "No, lad." You, <laughs> yeah. He's like, "No, lad, you." <laughs> Yeah. And then he tells them that he's been investigating the whole time. Yeah. The incident. Yeah. And in order to catch Amaram out, he told him about the um, Knights Radiant, like the Herald that they captured. Yeah. No, and that Borodin. Borodin. Yeah. Was spying on Amaram for. Um, Dalinar yeah. without Amaram knowing yeah and so he set up a trap of um, putting the shard blade in a cave putting to see if yeah, so. the honourable Amaram would go and fetch it yeah and obviously he did and he he didn't tell Dalinar that he now has it yeah and so Dalinar is like you know you're hardly that honourable so actually yeah I do believe that you stole those yeah. plates and blade yes now apologise because Dalinar then summons the blade yes. that that Taln had which he was expecting Amaran to tell him about and then Amaran took it without telling him yeah and so he summons it and he's like oh you recognise this do you <laughs> yeah <laughs> such an amazing moment it's such a great moment now question about that blade or rather not a question because I've already told you about this but remind it to the people out there the blade that Talna arrives at Kolinar with yeah. is a big spike. Yeah. And that's his honor blade. When he arrives at the Shattered Plains, the, the shard blade he has isn't a spike. It is a described as a large cleaver. Mm. And that is because in between T- uh, Talna going from Kolinar to the Shattered Plains, someone somewhere has swapped out his honor blade for just a random shard blade. Mm. 
Mm. This is super, super interesting because I believe we still don't know who did this. Yeah. It could... I think we know it's not the Sons of Honor, you know, the people Amaram and Gavilar yeah. are part of. Uh, it's not Gav- Yeah, Amaram and Gavilar. And I think we might... We think... It might not be the ghost bloods. I can't remember. We know Hoyt definitely doesn't have it. Yeah. So where is Tom Honor Blade, which gives you the ability to become a stone ward? Where where is it? Just just where is it? We just we just don't know. Um what was the other thing? Oh, and then also because you're reading these books years in the future, you missed the whole saga of the man who calls himself Tom. Yeah. Where for years, Brandon would refer to him as Tom. He'd only ever refer to him as the man who called himself Tom. And so for years, we were like, Brandon, wh- why are you saying this? <laughs> Is it Tom? Is it not Tom? Who? Like, yeah. well, it, it turned out he was just messing with us. So when Brandon says he doesn't mess with us, he's lying because he does mess with us all the time. Fair enough. Yeah. So then they start their journey across the Shattered Plains. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to say... The writing notes for part five was really difficult. Yeah. Because the storylines overlap so much. Yeah. And Kaladin's off doing stuff at the same time as everyone else on the Shattered Plains. Yeah, so you've just gone... Well, what I've done is I've written about them getting to where the Parshendi are. Um... I've then cut back to what Kaladin was doing whilst They're they doing were doing that. that. And then... And then when the battle sort of merges, I've gone back to... All of them together. All of them together. That's cool. So it's a bit all over the place, this section. Okay. We'll see what we but can we'll do. we'll just go with it. And I'm sure in doing all of this splicing, I'm missing out, like, massive chunks of information. Yeah. So I'm sorry. Well, I mean, we've managed to go this whole video and we haven't talked about the epigraphs once. I know. This is the thing. There's too much There's information. so much in these books. It's impossible to get everything in. Yes. Unless we were doing this for like six, seven hours. Like it's... This video series is literally going to be six, seven hours. I know. <laughs> <laughs> like... But it's... There's just too much to throw in. Yeah. So... Part five. Part five. Yeah. Um... So Shalana is riding with Adolin on horseback across the plains. And whilst they're doing so, he suggests that maybe she should go in a carriage because it gets sore after a while. You know, yeah. It's considerate. Yeah. Um, and as they're riding, Gaz, who has been missing for a while. Oh, yeah. He runs after me. He's like, miss, mistress, mistress. Yeah. I brought this for you, and he's managed to get hold of a copy of Words of Radiance for <gasps> yes, her. Yes, that she was reading beforehand, yeah. Well, it's the book that Yasna, Yasna gave her, yeah. and she didn't get a chance to read, uh, but it explains her order. Yeah. So she takes it, and she's like, you know what? I will take a carriage. Yeah. So she's in the carriage reading, and she's researching, yeah. and she's also going through Yasna's notes trying to get as prepared for the shattered planes as she can yeah and navani joins her yeah and they have a really nice talk about her time with yasna yeah and yasna's research and navani agrees to help her with it Mm. and so they're researching together and they're working together and it's really sweet and i really like that they've started to bond a bit yeah i was gonna say navani's little little arc of of Initially being angry at the uh, mm. thing and just... Because she's mourning, isn't she? You know, yeah. so it's... It's understandable. Yeah. And then Shalan is talking to Dalinar. Yeah. And she reveals the fact that she's a radiant to him. Oh, does she? And um, mm. I believe that she does an illusion for him. Yeah. And he's like, wow, this is what I've been looking for this whole time. I was wrong to... Put Amaram in charge. Yeah, I was wrong to put someone in charge to reform the knights. I should have been looking for the knights and trying to gather them yeah. in a central place. So then he tries to make Shalan in charge of the Knights of Radiance. Uh, and she's like, no. She's like, no, God, no. no. I'm the worst person for the charge. <laughs> Don't do this to the world. And then he talks about how he's really pleased that she's going to be marrying his son. Yeah. And um, they have a nice moment together. Yeah. yeah. And she asks him to keep it a secret because at the moment it's still so new and she's still trying to work everything out. 
Yeah. Which he agrees to. And, like, he won't even tell Navani. Like, it's completely between the two of them. Yeah. They're then interrupted by a messenger who has come to tell them that they found a Parshendi and he wants to talk to them. Yes. Um, so they go out and the Parshendi says that his name is... Relaine. Relaine. Yeah. And he used to be a member of Bridge Four. He... Was a spy. He was a spy. Yeah. But he went back to his people and his people aren't there anymore. They've changed form and they are not the people he left. Yeah. So he doesn't want to join them. He wants to come back. He wants to help Dalinar. Yeah. So then Dalinar's using him for information and like he releases him to the custody of Bridge Four because Bridge Four are quite insistent that he is a member of them and they will not let anything bad happen to him. Yeah. Um so now they've got, yeah, they've got Relaine, back. Relaine back. Yeah. And I really like that. Relaine's really nice. I like Relaine. Yeah. And then they reach the Parshendi home. Yeah. Which kind of looks abandoned, but their scouts tell them that there's like 10,000 Parshendi yeah. split between three planes surrounding them. Yeah. So they're like, cool, I guess we're... Guess to battle. Yeah, I guess yeah. it's time to plan our attack. Yeah. So they have a planning meeting. They plan their attack. Yeah. And then Dalinar's watching the Parshendi, and they sort of, like, get into a formation. Yeah. And they start singing. They start singing. And Relaine runs up to him, and he's like... That song's bad. Yeah. That's a bad song. We need to kill them before they finish that song, because yeah. if they finish that song, we're all in trouble. Yeah. So Dalinar just calls that the assault has to start now. Yeah. So the assault starts. Yeah. And they, they've they each sort of taken a plane. Yeah. Dalinar stays on the central plane with, like, Navani so that he can oversee the, yeah. the battle. Adolin's gone off on his plane and they're fighting, but it's not going too well. Yeah. Adolin realises that the singing Parshendi that they're trying to get to mm. have their backs to, like, a structure. Yeah. So he and his team sort of, like, make their way around the battle. Yes. To the structure. They go in from behind and they cut it open with a shard blade. Yeah. And his whole army, like, piles in there. And then when they're ready, he cuts a hole through and they all, like, Pop, come attack from out. behind. Yeah. And the Parshendi that are singing are completely, like, in a trance. Yeah. So they start absolutely ploughing through them before they can even react. And then Eshenai appears. So Adolin and Eshenai battle it out. They start having their little duel. They have their, like, shard bearer fight. Yeah. And whilst they're fighting, Adolin realises that she's quite a match for him. Yeah. And his way of defeating her is he gets her close to the edge of the chasm. Yeah. Without her realising, and he knocks her into the chasm. Yes. And then we lose Eshenai. And then we lose Eshenai, but you don't see her body, so clearly she's not dead. Look, I know why you ate that shoe. <laughs> <laughs> this is the failing yeah. because I know yeah. why you ate that shoe. I yeah. know that she's dead. Yeah, see, otherwise I, specific... I would be with you on this. So do you know that you don't know the full story though, do you? Probably. So I I made a bet that not only did she I survive the falling into the chasm, yeah. but that she'd become a knight's radiant as well. Yeah. Because I really liked Eshenai. I really, really liked Eshenai. To be fair, I like Eshenai. And then yes, I was the one who then went to Brandon. Um Okay, so you know she's dead, um, yeah. because we find out that she's dead, and I was the one who went to Brandon and was like, so, has she passed on to the beyond? Is there any chance whatsoever that she could come back and be a nice Radiant? And he was like, yeah, she's, he's like, I'm going to canonize this, she definitely went into the beyond. <laughs> and I was like, oh no, I can play you the uh, the wob, you can literally no, hear okay. my heart break it's as, okay. uh, as, as I discover that she's legitimately dead and she's not coming back. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And then I tweet a shoe because of it. And... Yeah, you're welcome. And it was a good shoe. I, I felt so ill after eating that shoe because it was so big. There was so a lot big. of sugar. It was a lot of sugar. That was like 60% icing. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> it was a good shoe. But I did it. I did it in the end. If you wish to see that, it's on one of the podcasts somewhere. It's uh, our 10-year anniversary live stream, part one. <laughs> it, was, it was a good shoe. Um... So whilst this is happening, the other princes are fighting. Yeah. One of the princes completely loses his plane and he dies and his army's getting wiped yes. out. Yes. 
Rashon manages to hold his plate. Rashon. Re- uh Oh, the high prince begins with R. Yeah. Because not Royal. I was going to say Royal. And I was like, no, that's the guy from uh, um, Elantris. Yeah. I've got it written down. Royan. Royan. Oh, okay. Um, uh, Royan. 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 Royan is fighting on one of the planes. Yeah. And he manages to win that plane. Yeah. But there's like heavy casualty loss. Yes. From all of the armies yeah. that have gone out onto the plane. Because these storm forms, they are they're like war Brutal. they're like war form plus. Yeah. Like and plus also they, also they can shoot lightning, which is uh, always a uh, always bad. <laughs> yeah. So the Parshendi have unfortunately sung their song. Yeah. Enough. Yeah. And there is a scary red storm flying in. Yes. And at the same time the storm a father. high storm comes in so yeah. from the storm father to try and counteract it yeah yes. um so the army starts to retreat to try and find a safe safe place yeah whilst this was all going on shalan got into the parshendi like place narak the city is called narak she found a plane that didn't match the symmetry and it's like a perfect circle yeah so she realized that that had to have been the oath gate yeah she gets into a building next to it by slicing the building open with a shard blade everyone's like why do you have a shard blade it doesn't matter and she's like she's like don't worry about it they can shoot Um, lightning i can have a shard blade okay (laughs) so they get into this building and she realizes that this is the portal to irrefer Thulu. Oh, you're so close. I can't Why say it. Why do you keep saying Cthulhu I at the end of the I can't say it. Oh, Just man. leave me alone. I can't say it. I can't word. Right, well, there is so much Eritherium in Oathbringers. You better learn how to say it during that. I won't. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> so she gets them into there. Yeah. And she's trying to open the portal. She sees there's a little, like, slot in the wall. Yeah. So Renarin, who's with her, tries to use his shard blade, but it doesn't work. Yeah. Obviously, because his shard blade is dead. Yeah. And um, there's lanterns on the wall. She realizes that you need to fill them with oh, shard, uh, stormlight. Stormlight. Yeah. So they start filling them with spheres. She then, like, the army's starting to like gather up and like they're getting a bit desperate. Yeah. We're gonna leave it there for a moment. Yes. We're gonna go back to Kaladin. No, we're not. Oh, no? Okay. Um, we're briefly going back to um, Adolin and... Okay. Because Adolin has made his way back to the plateau where Dalinar is. And Dalinar's in a tent and he hears a commotion in the tent next door. So he comes out of his tent and Adolin comes out of that tent fighting Seth. Yes! So he's like, oh, the assassin's here now. Yeah, of really? all the times. So that's where we're cutting. Okay, now we're cutting back to Kaladin. Now we're going back to Kaladin. So whilst this is happening, Kaladin is at the camp recovering. Obviously, without his stormlight, he has to recover like a normal person. Yeah, he's just going to hang out like a normal dude. So his leg is full of stitches. He can't really walk on it. Like, he's trying to recover. Yeah. Um, He's got a couple of men there that are guarding the king because the king obviously didn't go on the final assault yeah um so he's brooding about the camp he's feeling useless he hasn't got sill to talk to anymore yeah he's not enjoying himself he's probably missing prison at this point he's probably, so yeah. he had sill there yeah um so mosh comes to visit him and tells him that the king wants to talk to him yeah and kaladin's like no i don't like that guy i don't want to be near him yeah no so Mosh goes back to tell him that that's not happening anytime soon. Yeah. Kaladin is trying to regain his strength, so he starts taking like little walks around the war camp. Yeah. Um, he visits the Ardents. He talks to... Borden? Zahil. Okay, Zahel, yeah. So he talks to Zahil for a little bit. Yeah. He tries practicing with a sphere, and he realizes that without Sil... It's not the same. Well, he's not very good. Like, 
all along he needed her to be yeah. really good at this and like all of his sort of fighting ability came from her and now he's yes well like the cool stuff like the cool swinging stuff. the spheres around and stuff yeah like that it's not as impressive without her yeah um so upon returning to his barracks at the yeah. end of one of these walks he realizes the king's carriage is outside great yeah he has to talk to the king yeah so he goes in and the king is drunk yeah and the king is like am i a good king and Kaladin's like no you're, <laughs> you're not. awful like what made you think who made you think you're a good king yeah yeah and Kaladin is very honest with the king and the king apologizes to him and he says that he wants Kaladin to help him to become a good king yeah and he's being really sweet to Kaladin and Kaladin doesn't really want too much to do with him yeah Kaladin hates this dude like, yeah yeah so Kaladin just sends him off he's like look you're drunk can you just go and sleep it off like yeah. off you go dude and then after he leaves Kaladin has a moment and Mosh talks to him and says that the plan to kill the king is underway it's yeah. gonna happen in a couple of days whilst Dalinar's too far out to come back and help and all is going well. They yeah. don't need Kaladin because they obviously planned it without Kaladin, thinking that Kaladin was dead. Now that Kaladin's back, there's no need to change it because he's yeah. injured. Yeah. Um, so Kaladin is pondering the events in his room. Yeah. And he realises that although he doesn't like the king, yeah. that doesn't matter. What matters is doing what is the right. The right thing, yeah. And letting the king die, knowing that it's going to happen, isn't acceptable to yeah, him. Yeah, it's, it's the same as killing him yeah. himself, basically. And Kaladin realises that he won't be able to live with himself if he does that. Yeah. So Kaladin, even though he's injured, rushes to the palace to try and warn the king. Yeah. He gets there and there's two guards outside his room. And they don't want Kaladin to go in the room. Yeah. So Kaladin, not like Kaladin, fights them. Yeah. Manages to, I think he like kills one and knocks the other out. Oh, okay. Like yeah. yeah. He thinks he's killed them both. Yeah. He goes in and he realizes that the reason the king is so obliteratingly drunk is to make it easier for them to assassinate uh. him. So he goes to get the king out, and. As he's leaving, Moash and not no? yet, not yet. Okay. Um, the guy that he knocked out that he thought was dead stabs the king. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, not too bad, but the king is obviously bleeding at this point. Yeah. And the, he's never been stabbed before, so he's like freaking out. Yeah. So now they're going down the corridor trying to find somewhere safe. They're both bleeding, so they're leaving like a trail of blood yeah. behind them. <laughs> And as they get into the corridor, Moash and Graves Graves appear behind them, both in full shard armor with blades. Yeah. Like, mate, you left us a trail. We just followed the we blood. We just followed. Yeah. So Kaladin leaves Elikar on the floor. Yeah. Elikar's unconscious at this point. And Kaladin's like, great. How am I going to do this? Yeah. Like, his leg is really bad. His leg is ruined. Elkar's bleeding out on the floor. He's bleeding he's out, bleeding standing out on the up. floor, and he's got two shard, full shard bearers. Yeah. So he tells Mosh that Mosh has betrayed Bridge Four. Yeah. You know this isn't the honourable, honourable thing to do. Yeah. You know your fight isn't actually with Elkar; it's with Rashon. He's the guy that is really, responsible. Yeah. Like I trusted you. Yeah. And this is how you've repaid me. You know? Yeah. And neither of them will back down. So they start fighting. Yeah. Kaladin very weakly tries to fight him with a spear. It just doesn't... It's not he, barely a fight. Well, he immediately, like, breaks the spear. Yeah. He gets taken down. And as he's down, he hears Syl... Yeah. ...fighting with the Stormfather. Yeah. And she screams at him to say the oaths. Yeah. So he says the third oath. 
Yeah. And as he does, the Stormfather has to accept it. Yeah. So Syl comes back and she becomes a shard blade. Yeah. So you were very close with your theory. So close. But like, yeah, Syl becomes the shard blade. And yeah. yeah. Uh, and then um, not only that, but like a glint. A glyph. A, a glyph, a pit, um, frost appears underneath him and it looks yeah. like a pair of wings. Yes. And he's like, the Knights of Radiance are back. Yes. And both um, Graves and... Moash. Moash. They're like, oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Graves reveals that the diagram was wrong. Yeah. Um, everyone else is looking at him confused because they have no idea what any of this is. Yeah. And uh, Graves was just trying to keep Kaladin from Dalinar. Yeah. And Kaladin's immediately like, oh no, Uh Dalinar's in danger. I can't have that. Um, So Moash and Grave run away. Yeah. Kaladin takes Elikar. Somewhere safe. Somewhere safe. Yeah. I love where he takes him. Where he takes him is great. (laughs) Um, And then Kaladin flies through the storm to get to Dalinar to hopefully get there in time yeah and that's when we go back to the fighting on the planes and we're back so Zeth Dalinar and Adolin and yeah um Ro and Royon Royon so um Seth's approaching Dalinar yeah Dalinar tells Adolin to be a good leader Dalinar has accepted that he's going to die at this point yeah and he tells him not to be a tyrant like him um and he just prepares to be taken down. Yeah. Um, he tells Bridge Four to stand down and to go to safety. Yeah. He demands it. So Bridge Four then leave to go and join the rest of the army on the Oathgate. Oathgate. Um <laughs> <laughs> So as Sev's approaching, Dalinar asks him why he killed Ga- Gavilar. Gavilar. Yeah. And um, Sev says that he killed him because he just does as his master says and he doesn't ask questions. Yeah. Which I don't think... Was the answer Dalin I wanted. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So then he starts fighting with Dalinar. Um, Royan... Yeah, dies. ...steps in to try and help and he gets lashed to the sky. Yeah. And then Sev takes down like a dozen of his soldiers yeah. in like a couple of sweeps. Adolin starts trying to fight him, but it's not really doing a great job. Yeah. Um, Sev gets to Dalinar and just lashes him to the sky as well. Yeah. And you're like, well, that's Dalinar dying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, at this point, Royan's body has already fallen back down yeah. and he's very dead. Yeah. So there's nothing that can be done at this point. Yeah. So Sev's like, right, my job here is done. He starts walking off. Yeah. Adolin charges to attack. Sev just turns around and breaks his wrist. Yeah. <laughs> Poor guy. And then shortly after that, Dalinar floats down from the sky, completely yes. unharmed. Yeah. And Sev's like, what? Ha- what? What? <laughs> and then Kaladin flies down. Yeah. And he lands and another frost glimpse comes out from underneath him. Yeah. And he's like, I claim the sky, yeah. the winds, and your life. Yes. And it's like, oh. Uh, so then Sev and Kalinar. Kalinar. <laughs> Good old Kalinar. Is that like Daladin? <laughs> yeah, it yeah. is. <laughs> so Seth and Kaladin start fighting in the sky they're yep. flying they're attacking each other yeah it's a big battle in the sky oh yeah the storm, the storm hits. hits yeah which means that they both get their storms yeah re- storm re- light constantly renewed yeah yeah so it's a big battle between them in yeah. the sky we get an interesting line from sill who says that zeth is using a dangerous amount of storm light whatever yeah. that means yeah yeah <laughs> um they they're, they're fighting. They're fighting. The armies, they activate the Oath Gate. Yeah. Shalan gets the Oath Gate to work by using her Shard Blade. Yeah. She immediately takes herself and the army to Irafulu. 
Oh my god! Oh my god! Iru Thiru! Thiru! Iru Thiru! Iru Thiru! Iru Thiru! Can you just let me have it? I can't. You do can't this. have Iru Thiru. You can't get halfway there and then fall apart. I'll go back to Urethra then. That's better! That's Fine. better! Fine. Urethra. They Excellent. go to Urethra. Excellent. Good. Um, so then Sev and Kaladin. Yeah. Well, Sev turns round to go back to kill Dalinar whilst yeah. Kaladin's far away. They look down through a gap in the clouds and the army just vanishes in front of them. Yeah. Sev realises that they must have taken them to Irafulu. So then Sev flies off because he knows how to get there without yeah. using an oath gate. So Kaladin is flying after him. Yeah. And... Sev kind of comes to the realization that he was r- right. He was, truth- he was truthful. He was yeah. right. Yeah. And that Kaladin is a knight of Radiance. Yeah. And at that point, he's like, you know what? Kill me. Yeah. Because I'm wrong. Well, I'm right. Yeah. <laughs> and that means that all of these deaths have been for nothing. Yeah. And I can't live with myself. So instead of delivering a killing blow, yeah, Kaladin cuts his wrist. Yeah. So he drops the honor blade. Yeah. And he falls from the sky because all of his powers comes from, from the, the blade. blade. Yeah. It doesn't come from him. Yeah. So Sev is falling from the sky. Yeah. Kaladin goes and retrieves his blade. Yeah. And he just leaves Sev to fall because yeah. it's going to kill him. Yeah, he's got no chance catching him. No. Um... So then Kaladin goes to the Oath Gate and some members of Bridge 4 come back for him. And yeah. they're like, we're in a new place. Come and join come us. Come join us. Um, so Kaladin goes through the Oath Gate. Yeah. So they get to Irith... You can do it. I believe in you. You do it. Irithiru. Irithiru. Yeah. So they get there and... Um, they discover that Kolinar is in riots. Yep. And they're like, great, we've not even warned people of the, the storms. upcoming storms. Yeah. So then they said about warning the world that this strange storm is coming. It's going in a different direction it's going than in the normal. Opposite. Yeah. To make sure that their parchment are left outside and they're nowhere near their people. Yeah. Because it's going to be bad. Yeah. Um, Whilst this is happening, we go to Lopen. Yes. Who, his mum is the person that is currently guarding Elikar. Yeah. Because obviously, nobody's going to look for him in someone else's war camp. In some random, In you some know. random shanty area. Yeah. So, Lopen is with Elikar. Yeah. And Lopen, every day since Kaladin got his storm powers, Lopen has been taking a sphere... Yeah. And like trying to suck in Stormlight in the yeah. hopes that one day he will as well. And today when he does it, he accidentally says the oath. Yeah. <laughs> and he draws in Stormlight. He regrows his arm. Yeah. He is now a nice radio. Yeah. I was going to say, doesn't he, he gets like little fingers start appearing on his stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, he's so close. So, so good. close. Um, Bridge 4, when they found Kaladin informed him that some of them started glowing yeah during this period and so they kind they're not radiant yeah they're sort of like ardents of radiance they're squires squires yes is what they're called they're like attached to kaladin so when kaladin's nearby they can use stormlight yes but when kaladin's far away they can't. It's 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 a it's like a connection thing. Yeah. Capital C connection. So when you when you're a knight radiant, you have the people around you who as they get closer to becoming knights, you they gain they gain powers themselves. Yeah. Windrunners actually get the most and the most powerful squires. Every order I think we know every order gets them, but yeah. Windrunners get like a load and they basically get full lashings powers. Um so yeah. Cool. I'm excited for this. It's very exciting. Um Mosh is leaving with Graves on a wagon. Yeah. Um, Graves says that they've misinterpreted the diagram. 
Yasna was right about the Parshmen. Yeah. So they're now going to go and meet back up with the rest of the Order and, like... Work out what to do next. Work out what to do next. Mosh feels like he's been tricked somehow. Yeah. But he goes along with him because he's got nothing else left. Yeah. Like, there's no way he can go back at this point. Um, Shalan is walking to her room. Yeah. When she discovers a message left from the ghost bloods with the name Shalan. Yeah. And it's like, oh, oh. So she goes to meet Maraise. Maraise, who tells her that they know that Vale is secretly pretending to be Shalan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they're fine with it. And actually, they still want her to work with them. Yeah. Um, and to think about it. And in the meantime, he, he, they've saved her brothers from the war, the civil war that's happening in the country. Yeah. And her brothers are currently on the way to join her. So you get some more of a good old... Yeah, I know. The Devar brothers. I, I love the brothers. <laughs> yeah. Um, and she's like, so you're going to blackmail me? And he's like, no, no, no. We're doing this regardless of your choice. Yeah. Like, this is just what we're doing. You want to join? That's fine. You don't, you don't. We'll give you a few days to think about it. Yeah. Um. So she goes back to her room where it looks like her room is like set up and it looks like her dad's study. Yeah. And Patton's like, you've got to say the final truth. Yeah. Say it, Shalan, and then you can be a radiant. Yeah. So Shalan finally breaks down and says that she killed her mum. Yeah. Um. So what happened was, was her mum, she'd been shown to be a radiant. Uh, Shalan had. Yeah. Yeah. And her mum was terrified of it. Her mum wanted her dead. So her mum had contacted... I don't know what order it was, but yeah. a guy had come from, like, a, either the Ghost Bloods or, like, Nalm's order. Uh, yeah, Nails, Order the Skybreakers. Someone had come... Yeah. ...to kill Shalan. Yeah. And her mum was fine with it. Her mum wanted her dead. Yeah. Her dad didn't. Mm-hmm. Um, so mum and this guy approached Shalan. Patton appeared as a shard blade and she yeah. killed her mum. Yeah. Her dad stabbed the other guy. Yeah. And um, that's yeah. what happened there. Yeah. And Shalan finally spoke that truth. Yeah. And now she is a full radiant. Good old Shalan killed both her mum and her dad. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure that's not going to be damaging. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, Amaram is in Dalinar's war camp. Yeah. And he takes Tarn. Yeah. And we don't know what he's going to do with Now, him. at some point in Words of Radiance, I couldn't remember if it was the earlier scene or the later scene, the ghost boys try to kill Tarn, right? They send a guy to the blowpipe. No, no, no. That's now. That's at that, that's at that point, yes. Um... So as Amaram is taking Tarn... Yeah. Um, il- Eotil. Eotil. Oh, is it Eotil? Okay. Because it's someone in a mask. Yeah. Um, start shooting darts. at him with a blow with yeah. blow darts and Tarn catches them. Yes. Because Tarn's a herald. Because here's the thing. People always argue whether heralds had powers beyond what their honor blade gave them, which was yeah. the surges. And I've always said, yes, look at this scene. Tarn, without looking, because yeah. he's like looking at the ground, he catches not one, but two. Two darts yeah. out of the air without even looking. Yeah. Like these, the, like the, the heralds, heralds were something else. The heralds are something else entirely. And they they are have got powers. Much better than their powers. Yeah. Um, so then um, you cut to Seth. Yeah. Who is alive. Yeah. And he is very confused as to what he's doing being alive. Yeah. And that's when we meet Nail. 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 We technically have met him before, but this is where yeah. he's introduced as Nail. So Nail, Nail, Nail. Yeah. is a herald. Yeah. And he has brought Sev back to work for him. Yeah. Because Sev is good at what he does. Yeah. And um, he gives Sev a new sword. And what does the sword ask him? Well, it's a black sword. And as he holds it, it says, would you like to destroy some evil? Yeah. <laughs> 
I knew Nightblood was going to be back. I'm so glad. <laughs> yes. It yes. Made me so happy. It's such a good movie. But that's it's like the build up from yeah. reading Warbreaker and I'm like I tried so hard I had to be so quiet and uh, when I was like oh yeah we're not going to see them again until Nightblood and I kept being like Nightblood the sequel not Nightblood the character because <laughs> no. the next time we see them is Nightblood yeah Blood. I mean you know you well, saw technically we saw Vasha first but... oh I can't yeah. confirm or deny it you know but... Vasha um, so yeah Nightblood is back and uh, and yeah yeah it's very, very exciting. That, that reveal is just kind of like hot, heart stopping. Like you just kind of go, whoa, you're like, oh, okay. I, when I read it, I think I knew Nightblood eventually turns up in Stormlight Archive. And, but I didn't know when. And yeah, and it's right at that last moment in the book, right near the end of the last chapter. It's like, oh. Yeah. Um, so Adolin is exploring the big tower. Yeah. Like city. Yes. What's it called, Lucy? I'm not saying it anymore. <laughs> That's fine. You I'm can done. say the tower. That's fine. Um, so he's exploring, and at the same time, Sadius is exploring. Yeah. Because all of the high princes have been told to come. Sadius is the first one to arrive, of course. Obviously. And he starts um, baiting Adolin by telling him how he's going to spin this to reflect badly on his dad yeah. and he's going to take power out from under his dad. Yeah. So Adolin, of course, is he, done at this point. He finally snaps. He has been holding himself back. All book. All book. All well, last, well, last two book. books Two now. books now, yeah. And at this point, he is done. He is alone in a corridor with Sadius. There's yeah. no one else around. And he loses it. Mm -hmm. And so they start fighting. Yeah. And because it's such a small enclosed corridor, neither of them can summon their shard blades. Yeah. Not that Sadius really gets a chance to. Yes. But Adolin takes his dagger and he stabs Sadius through the eye. Yeah. Kills him. Kills him very thoroughly. Amazing moment. Yeah. But I am quite upset about it. Why are you upset about it? I was so looking forward to like either next book or like at some point in the future. Yeah. It to be a year after the big duel that he had. Yeah. And for Sadius to have forgotten that he had agreed to duel him in a year's time. Oh, yes. And for Adolin to just appear in front of him, full shard blade and plate, and just kill him. Yeah, and be like, well, that was our duel. Because that's what they agreed. And <laughs> yeah. it's not his fault that Sadius forgot. Yeah. <laughs> I was really hoping for that moment. Yeah. I'm quite sad that I won't get it anymore. But you know. Um, so Oathbringer appears. Yeah. And... Obviously, he knows that he can't be caught with it because that won't be, be good. good. Yeah. So he just drops it out the window <laughs> and just <laughs> <the window>. leaves it. <laughs> it makes me laugh so much that he just chucks it out the window. Well, obviously, someone's going to come across it eventually yeah. and they're going to be accused of being the murderer. Yeah. So that should be fun. Yeah. Dalinar yeah. goes to the top of the tower. Yes, yes. And he says the oaths. Yeah. And he tells the Stormfather that he's bonding with him. Yeah. And the Stormfather's like, no, I don't want to bond with you. Yeah. And Dan and I like, well, I've said the oaths to you, so you've got no choice. Yeah. And he's like, and, that's not how this works. And the Stormfather eventually gives in and he's like, fine, you can be a bondsmith. Yeah. But I will not be turning into a weapon for you. Yes. He's like, so he's like, yes, I will, but do not expect me to become a sword <laughs> for you. And it's like, okay, okay. Wonderful. Yeah. And... Um, He's then, Dalinar's then meeting with his Knights of Radiance. Yeah, so he meets with Kaladin. He's, it works well, now Dalinar, Kaladin, Shallan, and Rhaenyra. And then Rhaenyra walks in and he's like, hey guys, hey, you I guys won. have one of these as well. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. Yeah. Um, and Kaladin says, you know, I'm going to fly off. I'm going to make sure my family's okay. Yeah. I'll check in on Kolinar because obviously... Yeah. We don't really know what's going on next. We can't get any word from them. And then I'll be back to join you guys. Yeah. So Kaladin leaves. Um, and then we get the epilogue. epilogue. Yes. And it's Wit. Yeah. And Wit is out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Talking to the... Kremling. Kremlings. Yeah. And out of nowhere... Yasna comes back. Yasna comes back. And she's all like, so oh, hey. I knew she was coming back. Yes. Um... So Yaz was like, Whip, we need to go. We <laughs> yes. need to find Irifu 
Ruthiru. Ruthiru. <laughs> it's like, oh, Shalom found it. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, but the pa- the Parshendi are going to turn into Voidbringers. And he's like, yeah, it's happened. Yeah. And she's like... We need to get the nice radio back together. And he's like, oh, yeah, your dad, uh, your uncle's doing that. <laughs> and she's like, oh, okay. Well. And then Wit tells her that he's going to work with her to save the world. Yeah. And they go off together. They go off gallivanting off together. And that's the end of Words of Radiance. Yeah. What did you think then, Lucy? Great book. Yeah. Really good. How do you, how do you really rate it against it. Uh, Way of Kings? Oh, so much better. Yeah. So I, much better. I agree. I think it's a, it's a much stronger book than Way of Kings. Way of yeah. Kings is more world buildery, but they're just what happens in this book is... This... Sorry. Way of Kings is just so much more world buildery, but what happens in this book is so much more like just stuff happens and it's yeah. cool stuff and it's hype and it's great. And um, I, I just really, really like this book. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. It's such a good book. What do you think to the Renarin reveal? I saw it coming. I can't believe you saw that coming. I... I found that insane that you saw that coming. I can't remember if I got it during The Way of Kings or whether it was during The Words of Radiance. I don't know if this was you working it out, but very early on in Words of Radiance, you you asked me early on in Way of Kings, what's it that Renarin is supposed to have? And I yeah. said, oh, I think he's supposed to have epilepsy. And then very early on in Words of Radiance, you were like... For someone with epilepsy, he doesn't seem to have very many yeah. fits. Well, he doesn't have any fits. He doesn't have any fits at all in the whole two books. Yeah. Um, other than, like, kind of seizing up when he's holding a shard blade. But as you pointed out, that's not what an epileptic fit looks like. Yeah. Um, see, I saw it coming out of nowhere. Yeah. As in, as in, I didn't see it coming at all. And I think Brandon himself has admitted, is, uh, I'm not the only person, because Brandon himself has admitted he thinks he made a mistake with Renarin, where he oh. didn't lead up and he didn't, he didn't foreshadow it enough. So you oh. kind of get to the end and suddenly all the, everyone's radiance. Well, you know? I saw it coming yeah. because I thought it was well foreshadowed. Okay. But I think the issue with Renarin is that he's not really in any scenes. Yeah. Like, he's such a background character that it's hard to build in the foreshadowing for it. Yeah. Because he's not really got any responsibility. He doesn't really do very yeah. much. Yeah. He's not one of these key players like the rest of them. Yeah. Um, what else? Oh, yes. Um, and also, did you know that you read the updated ending? Because the release ending was slightly, slightly different. Did not. And Go it's ahead. the minorest difference. And I find it so pointless that you change this. Okay. So during the fight between Kaladin and Zeth, mm. when Zeth puts his arms out and is just like, just kill me. Yeah. In the original ending, Kaladin finish his strike and he kills Zeth. Okay. And he kills him. He doesn't divert it and chop his arm. He actually like kills him and he falls from the sky. And I find it... Brandon's reasoning is that he doesn't want uh, you know, the the, oath, the, honor, the Windrunners, their oaths are all about being honourable and yeah. killing people, that only killing the people they have to, um, protecting people and like they're not about killing a random someone yeah. who's given up. And... That's kind of what he's changed. He changed it from he didn't kill the guy who'd given up. He severed his arm, which then yeah. melted off the snow. I just find it such a... It's not a pointless change. I get why he's changed it. No, I just I... feel like he didn't intentionally kill him after he gave up. I like... think I prefer it that way. Really? Because, again, the whole honour thing. Yeah. If Seth had been like, no, I, I'm not doing this anymore. Yeah. Killing him at that point would have been killing him dishonorable. But he but Kaladin didn't realize he'd given up until the very last second. Like he was mm. he was swinging. And so it's kind of like for me it's yeah. like he it wouldn't have been killing him dishonorably because he would have just been striking out a guy he thought was trying to kill him and it wasn't but until the last second. I guess the thing about being honorable yeah is obviously not killing where you don't have to. Yeah. So Sil obviously told him that if you get rid of his blade he he'll lose his powers. Yeah. And so by cutting his hand off, he didn't have to kill him. Yeah. I know that he was gonna die from that fall anyway. Yeah, so the last thing is like it's it's you kill you, you're him. killing him. Well like, it's not him killing him. Yeah. It's the fool killing him. Like it's it, the, I think my problem as well, speaking of this, is something you reminded me, is when he says Marash is gonna kill Elakar mm. and me not doing something 
resulting in Elokar's yeah. death is just as bad as me killing him. So why is me doing something, cutting the honor blade off from Zeth, this, this different? Like yeah. I, I, I just don't like the new ending. I just, I, I, I maybe it's because the one I wrote, re- I said the one, it's the one that I read. Yeah. And so maybe this is why I feel quite strongly that I feel the ending. Yeah. No, I, was fine. I get it. Yeah. But like I didn't see yeah. the problem with it. It does change. The, the thing that annoys me is that it also changes the canon slightly because. Mm. Nail uses the regrowth fabriol that you see in the Starfall vision. Yeah. And he uses that to heal Zeth. And so in the original, he heals Zeth from a shard blade wound mm. um, to the spine, like a shard, shard blade death. And then in the new version, he just sell, he heals him from a shard blade wound to the arm. Yeah. And so it's like, okay, so does the regrowth, can that heal the... Matters to like Cosmere Romatics people. Yeah. Probably doesn't matter to you at all. No, no, not. but like to me, it's kind of like um, mm. that's fair. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's the alternate ending that you didn't see. Cool. Yeah. In terms of questions, you kind of sprinkled your questions you left over there in your in your notes, didn't you? Yeah. So you've got. I don't really like- have any kind of outstanding theories. Like I think yeah. I was just so swept up in this last part of the book. A lot happened. That I just didn't have yeah. time to think about anything. Yeah. And I think that's the thing with this book is that you're getting so much payoff from earlier setup. Yeah. That there isn't really anything. Yeah. Left. I know what you mean. I mean, I definitely want to know more about Tara Vanji. Yeah, Tara Vanji. Because he's interesting. Yeah. And the whole um, night blood blood and like whole th- that whole thing. The what skybreakers. Skybreakers. The uh, Nails Order of Metroidian. Oh, Sorry. Not him. The one that Moshe's now with. Uh, the diagram. The diagram. Yeah. There's like all these different orders. I'm wondering like where they're connected. It was it was it was during the break between Words of Radiance and Oathbringer that I think we had to ask Brandon. We were like, right, so you have the Sons yeah. of Honor, you have the Ghost Bloods, you have um the Skybreakers. Mm. You get kind of hints of those. Uh, you also have the Amians, who you now know about, because even though you've read Edge Dancer, we yeah. haven't spoken about Edge Dancer. So you've got the Amians. Um, I think, am I missing someone? I'm sure there's another. There, there there's, will be. There's so many secretive organizations going on on Roshar. Yeah. I think we have to play like Brandon, like, Brandon, how many more are you going to make? <laughs> and he's like, he's like, okay, honest to God, that's nearly all of them. I'm like, <laughs> nearly? What do, you, what do you mean nearly all of them? He's like, the, you've, met, you've met all the major ones. I'm like, okay, fine. Fine. Uh, fine. Uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot going on. Yeah. Oh, how do you feel? Uh, is there ever storm named in Words of Radiance? The storm that the yes. Pashendi summer. So yeah, how do you? What do you think about that? And what do you think's going on with the uh, the ever storm? Any theories? Um. Well, obviously, it's bringing back void bringers. Bringers. Yeah. But I don't think that they're like proper void bringers. Okay. I think they're sort of like a watered down version. Yeah. I think that the real problem hasn't started yet. Interesting. Cool. Cool, Um, cool, cool. Yeah, that's why I'm leaving that one. Excellent. Cool. Cool. Excellent, then. I think that that's us done, then. Yeah. Words of Radiance done. You you will do we'll record Edge Dancer and you'll have Edge Dancer next week. Yeah. And then you can get started on Oathbringer. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I look cool. forward to that one. Thank you, everyone. Um, leave your comments down below what you thought of Words of Radiance. How do you think it compares to Way of Kings? Do you think the do you prefer one or the other? And yeah, so follow us on 17shard.com. Follow us on Twitter. Follow us on Facebook, on YouTube. Pin us on Pinterest. Is that where you do you pin things? Do you pin people? I don't know. Um, we have a Patreon, and so you can give us money. And if you give us money, then you get to see these early, a couple of days early. Um, and uh, thank you very much, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.